Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on Wednesday, the 28th of September, 2021, on Vision Store's Exploring Technology webinar with David Woodbridge on the Apple Watch. My name is Tony Wu, and I'll be one of your hosts, and I'm joined by my fellow colleagues, David Woodbridge, who is our Vision Store National AT Advisor, and Christy Wilson, who is our Vision Store Support Officer from the Wollongong branch. I'd like to begin the session by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. I would like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. The webinar will be recorded for those who cannot stay for the entire session and you can access the recording later by visiting Vision Australia's YouTube channel. This is an interactive session, so please submit any questions that you may have for us throughout the session by using our chat box. For those that use a screen reader, you can access the chat function through keystroke alt H or command H if you use a Mac. We'll answer as many questions as we can and as many as time permits. Welcome, David and Christy. It helps if I unmute myself, doesn't it? Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so David, I can't, so I can't gonna... hear myself in my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so please enlighten us with um, the Apple Watch, David. All right. Okay. So I, as I say in all my webinars, this is going to be my favorite tech to talk about, but I always say that about the other tech anyway. But so today it's all about one of my favorite bits of tech, which is the Apple Watch. Now, everybody knows with the Apple Watch, let's just start off by saying that you do need an iPhone to use an Apple Watch. So yes, it does have some functionality by itself, but honestly, to set it up and everything else, you really do need it to be connected to an iPhone. Um, but I'll, I'll mention some slight differences with that later on in the webinar. So. At the moment with the Apple Watch, we have three different Apple Watches because the, the Series 7 is not quite here yet. It's sort of later on this season. So at the moment, it stands at the S3, the SE, and the S6. So Series 3, SE, and the Series 6 watches. And really, the only difference between physically between the S3 and the SE or the S6 is if I hold, this is my S3, and where I would normally wear it like that on my wrist, of course, I'm just sort of holding it at sort of sideways and upside down a bit. But on the front, closest to my wrist would be the crown or the winder on an old fashioned watch. And then to the right of it, you've got what's called the side button or used to be called the dock button. And that one's actually a mechanical button that I can sort of press in and it'll, it'll actually move mechanically versus, the SE and the S6. So this is one of my S6 watches. And the actual button is flush with the actual case of the watch itself. Tactilely, I can just feel it. If I just sort of drag my finger slightly along the button, I can actually feel where the side button is. And the digital crown sort of it's got a winder that you can sort of wind around, you can push it in and so on. But I'll get onto that button functionality. But I'm just going to not worry about the S3 because everything I talk about now is really to do with the S6. Um, I do know the S3 is still available, um, which is wireless only. Because with the S6 and the SE, so the SE is sort of the, the smaller model, if you like, as far as features are concerned. Um, the SE and the S6 give you wireless and cellular. So if I leave my iPhone behind and I still need to make a phone call, et cetera, or use messages, I can still do that when I'm out in the back because it's using a cellular um, sort of an electronic SIM card inside it. With the S3, that has to be sort of, you know, wirelessly linked up to my iPhone. And the S3, for all intents and purposes, is getting a little bit old in the tooth, so to speak. Um, so I would suggest if you're thinking about getting a new Apple Watch, I would look at the SE and the S6. And the main difference between the SC, SE and the S6 is the S6 has the ECG function in it. Um, so that's sort of the main difference between the SE and the S6. Um, the S7 coming out, like, like I said, later on this season, it doesn't have any more features in it as far as sensors are concerned, but it actually has a bigger screen. And what I mean by that is the physical watch is still basically the same size, but what Apple has done, which they always do, is make the surround around the outside of the actual watch 
smaller. So the bezel's smaller, which means they get more screen real estate. Um, so I think the, the numbers at the moment is that you get about 20% more screen real estate on the S7 than you do on the S6 and the SE. Um, and of course, it's a better screen to look at, and probably a little bit of extra battery life. But as far as sensors are concerned, you don't get any more sensors. Uh, so just to just go over the main features of the Apple Watch again. So we've got the digital crown, the side button, the main touch screen interface, which you can flick around and touch and everything else. Um, and then on the opposite side here to where the crown is, um, that's where your microphone and speakers are. And then this little round hump here called the puck, that's where you would attach it to or, or just drop it on to the wireless charger. Um, and by the way, it's not a key charger. So you can't use any old key charging device. It has to be the little puck thing that comes with it to have the right shape for it. So that plugs into that and then you can charge the watch. And then the really cool thing about the Apple Watch is you plug it in and after an hour, you'll get up, if from zero, no battery, you'll get up to 80% of battery in the first hour. So it really charges very, very fast. Now, the really cool thing that I absolutely like about this, and pardon folks, you'll you hear me say the really cool thing I like about this, and I must say that for every single feature. But at the moment, I don't have any bands on this at the moment. And because you can see on this side, there's a slot. The other side, there's a slot. And that's simply where you slide the bands into. Now, Tony, I'm not, increasing, I'm not too sure if you can see this on the video, but just above where the slot is where my fingertip is, there's a button. And what happens is when you slide the band in, it clicks and then to pull the band out, you press that button in and then slide the band out. So if I grab one of my bands here, and this is the Melanaise loop. Um, this is the one that basically um, goes around in a loop around your wrist. Now, what I'm gonna do, so there's the, there's the band. Now the little trick here, just here, there's a little knob that sort of sticks out, a little connector that sticks out. So that has to, of course, go inside of the watch. So it's basically that little nub up. And I put that at the beginning of the actual slot, slide it in, and you hit the click. And then I just bring the other side around and plug in the other side. So then when I... <laughs> I heard that, good point. Uh, <laughs> yes, you can get the bands off eBay. Um, I bought all my original Apple Watch bands about, um, geez, five years ago when the watch canvas came out. So to get the band off again, I just simply, let me just do it on this side. I simply push that button in, which I normally do with my other finger and then just pull it off. And there we go, it's off. All right, so. So as a person just sit on the chat, you can get different bands. I'll just, and you can get similar ones to these and all sorts of ones. I've got a couple of wooden, I've got a couple of wooden ones and that sort of stuff as well. So keep in mind, yes, you can get, um, you know, third party. Well, I, some people call them ripoffs, but I just call them third party bands and they're you're absolutely right, they're a lot cheaper. So that's the, Mel, the Melanese Loop one. Then we have my other favorite one, which was horrendously expensive at the time. This is the stainless steel band. So this one, you've got the little connectors at each end, of course, and then when you open it up, that's how it expands. And of course, when you put it around your wrist, you just fold it up into two, click it together. And of course, that's the way you wear it on your wrist with the watch in the middle. So that's the, the that one. And I use that one for when I sort of go to corporate -y type meetings. Um, one of my favorite ones is this one. So this is called the Lever Loop. And what it is, so it's an all leather band. And what they've done is this one goes on one side of the watch as a, a, a bit of a connector through there. And then this loops through the rest of the watch. So I'll actually show you this one, how this one works because it's actually really, really cool. Uh, and it's funny because I just put, well, there it is. All right, so I'm gonna put that band on that side. Okay, so that just flops around like that. And then I'll put the other one on the other side. And I got it back to front just then. All right, so if I was gonna put it on my wrist, I hold it like that. I put that through there, like a loop. 
put my hand through it. And I do this on my, my left wrist, not my right one, because I've already got my Apple Watch on. Flick it around, and it's on my wrist. And it, it, it's just lever, and each little part of the loop has got little magnets in it. So it sort of feels like a bit of a tractor wheel on my wrist. So this is one of my favorite leather bands, this one. So that's the, the level loop. And again, I'm sure you can find sort of look like ones on, um, on eBay. So that's that one. Now, the one that sort of everybody traditionally got with the good old Apple Watch was this one. And I've got, sort of got it folded up in a minute with two components. So most of us call this the sports band. Um, Apple calls it the Fluoro Elasterma uh, sports band. Uh, so simply if I take it off, so here, I'll just pretend I'm actually wearing this. So, so what I've done, I've, that's the little nub that sticks through the actual connector points on the band. I've just folded it for a little loop there. And then of course it would look like that if I was, wear, if I was wearing it. I, I tend to use this one. I tend to use, I, I I tend to use this one when I'm actually doing um, washing the car and that sort of stuff. So that comes in quite handy because I don't tend to wear the level loop or the other ones. Um, the one, now, if I remember where I put this, I'll be able to find it in a minute. Let's have a look. Yeah, no, it's a little either. No, you can't put it on a chain to wear around your neck. It has to be on your wrist because it's got all the sensors in it um, are for blood pressure, heartbeat, and all that sort of stuff. So no, you can't really do it that way. Um, I was going to show you a pull over the wrist one, but I, okay, we'll just, we'll just do mine one at the moment. So I've got my Apple Watch, my other Series 6 Apple Watch on. And yes, I do have two, one for testing and one for wearing. So this one just basically pulls off your wrist. So this is called the solo band. So this is the one where you had to sort of get that little piece of paper <clears throat> and then actually do the right measurements. So I actually went to an Apple shop and had this one fitted. There's another one which Apple just calls the loop and hook, or I just call it the Velcro band. So similar to the loop one, the level loop one that I showed you, but it's a it's a it's basically a Velcro strap and it's my absolute favorite. But this one's lovely because you just work it on your wrist and that's it. You're ready to go. And then of course you've got to unlock your watch and um, you know, open it up and, and unlock it and, and start using it. So this one, I think I'm a, I think I ended up being a 10 on my wrist with, with this particular one, but it's it's lovely because you can just whack it on and off. Because what I what I found with my watch sometimes, I like wearing it on, on the wrist depending on what I'm doing on my left or right wrist. So you just whip it off, put it on your other wrist, and you're ready to go again. So you know, really straightforward. And because you can slide them on and off so easily, they really work really nicely. Um, just put that back on my left wrist. All right, so, and the other one that I, I just, I had to buy because it was cute. This is the traditional watch band. Um, so here we've got, just to, here we've got the nice little, you know, the normal lever um, band with the little clasp on it that you'd have on a, an, on a traditional watch. And of course you've got the lever bit, the little connectors on the other side to connect it to. So. That works really nicely. What I'd love to have in the future would be a band that contains some sort of internal battery. So that would give the Apple Watch a bit more oomph if it needed to. So that's the, that's the thing I'm hanging out for in the future um, is an Apple Watch band that has a built-in battery. All right, so that's that one. So that's, that's sort of give you some idea of the range of bands you can get. Um, and as I said, I'd recommend the SC, SE or the S6 if you really want to do the, actually I made a mistake about the SCG, so it's not the SCG function, it's the blood oxygen sensor that's in the, uh, in the S6, not in the SE. Battery last gives you about full 18 hours during the day, uh, depending on how much you thrash the watch. My watch doesn't last all day because I do a lot of workouts with my watch, so I do, um, I do like a circuit training every day outside. Um, I go for about a four or five K walk every day. So I'm using my GPS in the watch itself. Um, so it really, my watch gets thrashed all the time. Um, all right, so what the other thing I wanted to show you before we get too carried away is 
it's really funny because sometimes I think I've got too much technology because every time I put something down on the table, I can't find it. All right. This is called a three-in-one charging station for your Apple Watch, your iPhone, and your AirPods. So we've got the big round, and this is for your basically for your you know your iPhone 10 and above, or even an iPhone 8 and above actually. Um, so you put the back of the phone on there, and it sits in a sort of a basically a good viewing position. You put your watch on this one. So if I wipe my watch off, I can just pop it on, and if this was plugged into power that would now be charging, okay? And then down here, I've sort of got that round indent and that's where your AirPods fit. Now, it doesn't, re this one doesn't, it sort of takes the AirPods Pro case for charging, the wireless charging. Um, but for me, I think it's sort of really designed for the AirPods 2 uh, to charge them rather than the AirPods 3 case. I just think the AirPods 3 case is a Pro one is a bit, a bit bigger. But I really wanted to put my iPhone, sort my iPhone there and my Apple Watch there so I can charge them. And this is normally sitting on my on my desk at work or in the office these days at home. And I just realized where I put the other one. It's in my back pocket. <laughs> where else would you put technology? This is a fold up one. So this is called the Duo Charger from Apple. So you unfold it and then on he puts up the right way on one side. Actually, that's right. So on one side, that's where you've got the wireless charger round circle for your iPhone. In here, if I just pop that up, that's the little charger that takes the Apple Watch. So again, I grab the Apple Watch, I pop it on, you just put it up the right way, and there you go. So on my coffee machine, this is where this one sits on my coffee machine. So I've normally got, you just plug in a lightning cable at the back of it, uh, you unfold it, because sometimes I've, I take it to work. And then when I'm not using it, I simply take it off, fold it up, bring that down first, David Woodbridge, fold it up, and off we go again. This one's about, and, about 160, I want to say. But it's really good because you can, I've always got a little Apple wireless, a little Apple cable in my bag. And because I'm always using my iPhone slash Apple Watch, this just goes with me. This just with me, go, just with me goes all the time. The smaller charger is called the Apple Duo, sorry, the Apple Duo Charger, Duo Charger. So both for iPhone and your Apple Watch. And because it's also a key wireless charger, um, folks that have got Samsung phones that are also wirelessly charging, you can also charge them off this as well if you want to. So that's actually a really, really good one, that one. All right. So let's, now we've done sort of the bit of the, bit of the hardware stuff. Let's get into some of the, ins and outs of the watch itself. So I'm going to put my Apple Watch back on. But it's just funny, I just forgot that I'd actually taken my Apple Watch off and I thought, hang on, that's not my watch. <laughs> All right, so put this one back on. All right, so now, by the way, you're going to hear my passcode. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat and just mute myself. Oh, I put the wrong one in. Let me just do that again. Voiceover on twelve forty nine button. It's not locking at the map for some odd reason. Hang on, tick. Because every time I turn voiceover on, it goes. I'm turning you off again. Twelve forty nine button. Double tap to unlock. Voiceover off. Yeah, I knew you would do this. Voiceover on, enter passcode, voiceover off. It's bizarre, isn't it? 1249, button. Double tap to unlock. No, it's going to be, it's going to be annoying. Oh, I'll fix it in a minute, actually, while I'm talking. All right, so the Apple Watch interface has got, actually, I'm going to change watches, actually. The Apple, so the Apple Watch has got several different uh, places to do its interface. So you've got the watch face screen. Um, and then you've got the, um, what's called the dock, and then you've got the actual applications screen as well. So they're all, all different per bits. And as soon as I get this watch back on my wrist, I'll be able to do that one with you. All right, here we go. Voice over on, 
Enter passcode seven. Six, and this is my three, test watch, two, so one. you're going to hear my test three, pin number, four, five, six, which I can six, go seven, and change later. Eight, nine, 12, 15, ECG. All right, so let me just turn the volume up. Control set, iPhone, connected, 12, 50 and 30, 12, 50 and 30, okay, so besides the time reading out. Off to a great start. Way to seize the day, day to day. Move 728. Exercise. So it's just Stand. telling me dismiss. my dismiss. movement dismiss. stuff Button. for the day, which is not really that 12, exciting 15, so far. ECG. Okay, so 12, each one of these things, the so we've got Wednesday, the 29th of September, that's the normal watch calendar event. Each one of these is called a complication if, or on your iPhone will be called a widget, all right? So if I flick to the right with one finger because I'm using voiceover. Mindfulness. Mindfulness. Mindfulness, which is now breathing and meditation on watch um, OS 8. 12.51 and 12 seconds. That's the time. ECG. ECG, which I'll show you in a minute. That's your electrocardiograph. Blood oxygen. Blood oxygen, for checking your blood oxygen level. Heart rate. Heart rate for your heart rate. Workout. Workout, which is what I lovingly use all the time. Battery, 46%. Battery, 46%. So they're my movement. So this is, this is the movement exercise and stand rings. And the way this works is your exercise one is just basically how many calories you're burning. The movement one will only move if your heartbeat goes up to a certain rate. Um, and because I've got such a low heartbeat, my heartbeat will basically kick into the the movement ring when I get up to about eight beats per minute because my resting heart rate's about 55. Today 13, so I just get rid of this meeting. Okay. Heart rate, battery, so battery, moving, moving and that's it. Now the other numbers you were hearing when it said moving 36%, exercise zero. Oh, so I got the one wrong round. Sorry. Movement is your calorie burn. Exercise is when your heartbeat gets up to a certain level and you stand. And then the and, 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 the, and then the numbers you were hearing, they were the numbers on the percentage of, of each of those rings. So that's the way sort of the rings work. And then this is a really cool bit about the, the, the watch itself is if I want to now get to say the notifications or the control panel, so same deal with the iPhone. If I flick up with voiceover. Control center, just uh, alarm, app store, button, 100%. Let me just speaking rate, rotate around words, on the rotor. Characters, headings, volume, one, speaking rate, words, characters, headings, volume, one, speaking rate, and because I went into a wrong screen, I'm going to go back to the watch screen seconds. to do this. Now if I flick up, watch face. it says customize watch face, notification center, notification center, control center, or control center. So if I double tap on control center, control center iPhone connected, so it says iPhone ETV, connected, mobile data, switch button. My, my data is currently off because I don't have this one connected to cellular. Wi-Fi Wi -Fi is on. Ping iPhone. So if I double tap on that, it's just ping my iPhone sitting on the other end of the table. And this is really cool because as a blind person, if you pop your phone down somewhere in the house, you go, oh, goodness, where did I put it? And you can irritate the rest of your family by just keep pinging your Apple Watch to find out where you put it. That's very, very cool. 46 battery power. So that's my battery power, 46%. Mode. Silent, mode. Switch button. On. Silent mode is available. currently on. Now I'm going to turn that off because on. if that's on and I, and I use the SCG, you actually don't get the, you don't get the sound of the SCG if silent mode's on. Cinema mode, Cinema mode I don't even worry about. Walkie talkie is pretty cool. That's Action where you can walkie talkie to another Apple Watch user. So you can pretend you're like on an old CB radio, you know, your old two-way radio type thing. Um, now, the only thing I don't like about the Apple Watch when I'm demoing it, because it goes to sleep every 70 seconds, it's really irritating when you're trying to demo the damn thing. Let me just go back. Okay, so back to Control Center. And I flick over again. Uh, we've got Focus Mode, which is to do for notifications. You can... Yes, it is. It is just as sensitive as the blood oxygen one, correct. Um, whoops, let me just go back. Actually, I won't go any bother back again. Now, people might notice with the SE and the S6, um, there's got one more thing in there that's called water lock. And people, <laughs> I've had people say to me, oh, you've got to turn water lock on before you go swimming. Well, the answer is no, you don't. What all water lock does, it makes a series of tones 
that generate the membrane in the speaker um, just to get rid of any extra excess moisture. So normally what you would do is you would turn water lock mode on when you go into the water, wherever it's surfing or swimming or sailing, wherever else. And what it does initially, it stops you from accidentally activating the iPhone, activating the iPhone, activating the Apple Watch via the touch screen. And then when you're finished, you then basically um, pressure digital crown, it says water lock is activated, it'll turn it off, and then it basically does the, the beep, beep, beep through the speaker, and then it just clears any extra, any extra, extra moisture. Because if you don't do that, um, the speaker sounds really tinny, like an old transistor radio from the 1970s or something. So it just gives it any extra moisture. If you don't do it, um, the speaker dries out after about five or six hours anyway. So I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be too concerned about it. So let's go back to our main application screen. Now the way to get to the app applications or the apps on the watch is to press the digital crown once. And this is very much like pressing your home button if you like to go order your home screen apps. So I've got alarms, App Store, Apple Store, Audible for Audible Books, Audio Books from your iTunes or Books app. And this, I'll just keep dismissing these news notifications. Blind Square, and I'll go. I'll just won't go through all of them, but there's all the apps are actually so things like mails on there, messages are on there, heartbeats on there, ECGs on there, blood pressure monitors on there. Sleeps on there, timers on there, reminders are on there. <laughs> Most everything you'd want to use on a watch is in the applications. Now, there's a bit of a trick here, particularly for voiceover users, because by default, when you actually get the watch and you set it up, and of course, it's all accessible, you can turn voiceover on and off via the digital crown by just pressing the digital crown three times. Oops. I just use, oops, hang on, I'm just. <laughs> I'll just wait for those things to stop talking. Um, yeah, I don't keep saying SCG, I keep saying ECG. So ECG is electrocardiogram. Um, and so that's for doing your pulse that I can show you in a minute. Um, you're right, with the way that you put, the way to put your Apple Watch to sleep is to put your hand over the actual um, screen of the watch and that puts it to sleep or stops it talking. So that's just a normal response for me. Um, all right, so if I go back to, let me just show you one of the ones. So I'm going to do, so I'm going to do an ECG one. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to put my finger on the digital crown. Hmm. Note, Apple Watch checks the heart attacks. ECG, heading. Now if I read the screen. 65 BPM average. So 65 BPM average, because I'm actually up and moving and everything else and I wasn't holding my arm properly. Normally when you do the ECG, you're supposed to have your arm resting on a table. So it gets a proper reading. Um, now the blood pressure one is only available if you're on the the S6, um, I believe, because that's where I said that for the blood pressure monitor one, I think the oxygen level is, is the, oh, sorry, sorry, I miss, my misspoke, not blood pressure, blood oxygen level, all right? So how much H2O or oxygen is in your bloodstream? So this one does not do blood pressure. Um, I guess you could call the ECG blood pressure in a way, but it's really a trace of your heartbeat. Um, and the really cool thing about the ECG function or the heartbeat one in general um, is it keeps a record. No, you don't need to adjust it for showers for the water lock. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, so with the, with the blood pressure one and the heartbeat, which goes sort of go together with inside the health app on your iPhone, because you can look back on a day, a week, a month, or a year, you can actually get your healthcare professional, if they want, if you give them permission to have a look at your phone, they can go back and see all your sleep data, 
heartbeat, exercise, cardiovascular stuff, everything on your Apple Watch. So when I got a bit worried early this year about my heartbeat at rest at night time being down to about 45 beats per minute, um, I got very paranoid. <laughs> so I went and spoke to the physician. They took a, you know, a proper ECG trace at the hospital and everything else. And uh, they just determined that I was one of these people that had just a very low heartbeat because when I'm exercising, I can get my heartbeat to go up to 140 beats per minute. <clears throat> my normal resting rate, like you just saw, was about 65. And then when I'm asleep, it averages between 45 to about 50 beats per minute. So he just said, look, he just one of these people that have a low heartbeat. <clears throat> and because I could show him my health data over the last week, month or year, he just said overall, going for a year average, it's 52. So, you know, just because you get a low heartbeat during the night, um, it all averages out at 52. So I said, don't worry about it. So that's what I like about the Apple Watch is it's it, it's not it's it's not me, it's not meant to be it's not meant to be a health app. <coughs> Excuse me, I was going to grab a cup, sip of coffee. Okay, so I won't show you the sleep one because the sleep one will just basically tell you how how long you slept at night time. It'll tell you what your heartbeat is. It'll tell you what time you went to bed, what time you woke up. But keep in mind, this is not meant to be a health device. Apple's always said it's a wellness device, all right? So it doesn't call it a medical device or a health device. It's a wellness device. So let me just show you the, the blood oxygen level one. So blood oxygen, double tap. So blood O script two, as it says with voiceover. So next, make sure your watch is not too low. So this is it doing the measurements now. Blood oxygen two heading results heading blood oxygen ninety five done button blood oxygen ninety five percent button. Okay, so my blood oxygen is ninety five percent. So normally, if it's over ninety percent, you know you're, you're going pretty well. Um, if I've been exercising all day, it's normally sitting at about ninety seven ninety eight. Um, sorry, it's normally sitting about ninety seven ninety eight, but ninety five is actually a pretty good level. Um, so between the ECG function, the blood oxygen uh, one, the heart one your sleep one, <laughs> you've really got most of the day covered. Um, and just to talk about some of the accessibility things. Um, so we've got the complication screen, which I just went through earlier on. We've got the notifications, which I won't bother about going into. Like the control center, we've got ping, et cetera. All the apps in the app switcher. Um, where you get to accessibility is sort of similar to the way you get to it on the iPhone. So you go into settings, accessibility, and you've reasonably got all the stuff you'd normally find in your iPhone. So you've got things like voiceover, of course, you've got Zoom, you've got low, particularly low vision stuff, like such as high contrast, reduced motion, bolded text, uh, all the sort of that normal type of stuff. With Watch OS 8 that just came out a week or two ago, you've also got assistive touch. So if you've got a person who is not using voiceover because it's not compatible with voiceover, but needs to have, say, just an icon to be able to press in the digital crown or use the dock or do other different types of gestures on the phone, on the watch, then that's what an assistive touch will allow a person to do. Um, you've also got switch control because uh, you might be using a different way of navigating the watch and that's under switch control. Uh, you've got hearing accessibility to do uh, in conjunction with hearing aids. And you can also adjust the speed of how fast you press the digital crown. Because when you go to the app screen, to get back to the home screen, you've got to press the digital crown in or to switch back from the home, the home screen to the last app you used, you've got to press on the digital crown twice or to turn voiceover on and off, you've got to press the digital crown three times. Now, 
remember like on the iPhone, you can change how fast you can press the home button if you still got an iPhone 8 or if you have an iPhone SE 2020. And you can adjust that from, I think it's very slow, slow or normal. Um, so that's just how fast you, you press it, which actually works out really nicely. Um, now, the thing about voiceover uh, that I was trying to do before, so let me just press mine once. If I turn voiceover off on this one, one, two, three, on the digital crown, and then one, two, three, and I've turned voiceover back on again. But by default, as I said, when you're setting this up, voiceover always gets turned on, particularly if it detects you're running voiceover on your iPhone already. Um, and like with the iPhone, um, voiceover, you've got screen curtain. So you can do still do your three finger triple tap for screen curtain to blank the screen, two finger double tap to mute the speech itself, or uh, a one finger tap to sort of find out if you're on sort of, you know, a page of three screens if you want to scroll and that sort of stuff. Um, the low vision option for Zoom works really well because once you turn zoom on you can simply take two fingers and basically go up down left and right over the screen and you can use the digital crown to wind up or wind down if you like the actual um, level of magnification you're using and one other cool feature that i use in the shower all the time is let me go to the screen okay so we're on ecg now i'm going to do a two finger triple tap and now I've turned digital crown navigation on because what happens if I'm in the shower, my screen's going to be wet. But what I can do with voiceover with the digital crown, I'm now moving my focus by using the digital crown. So blood oxygen, ECG, 1307, mindfulness, and so on. But, and this is a really cool thing that I absolutely love about Watch OS 8. Yep, sure. So what I did was, okay, so I'll just turn, so digital crown navigation. So you turn it on, basically turn it on and off by doing a, a two finger triple, uh, sorry, a triple tap with two fingers. So two fingers, one, two, three. One, two, three. And it says digital crown navigation on. And then if I push my digital crown away from me, blood oxygen, blind square, audio books, because I'm in the app screen, pull it back towards me, blood oxygen, calculator, calm, camera remote, and so on. And then because voiceover basically treats the whole screen as the actual icon, as long as I can still one finger double tap anywhere on the screen, it works really well. Now, that's not the cool thing I was going to show you. This is the coolest thing at all. Have a look at this one. All right, so watch is sleep. Um, now I'm going to wait. I'm going to twist my wrist to wake my watch up, and I'm going to clench my fist twice, and that's going to activate a really cool new feature I want to show you. So twist my wrist, clench twice, and I've now activated my watch. So now if I just pinch. Okay, so if I just go back to my digital phone screen, ECG, blood oxygen, heart rate. Now I'm not touching my watch. I'm simply pinching two fingers together, my index finger and my thumb. Battery. Okay, and if I want to go the other direction, I just pinch twice. So twice, twice, battery, workout, heart rate. And if I want to go into heart rate, I'm just going to clench my fist. And it's just brought up heart rate because that's a one finger double tap. So and if I want to go back to the home screen and press the digital crown, I clench my hand twice. One, two. And I'm back to the watch face. So isn't that amazing? Then what they've done with that is they're checking your pulse, uh, your pulse and a few other accelerometer type stuff. And that's how they judge when you do a single clench, a double clench or one pinch or a double pinch. 
I reckon that's almost like magic. I remember the famous quote from Arthur C. Clarke when they said, when we wrote, you know, any advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So, you know, when I'm out and about and I go like that and I go clench, clench, turn it on, and then I go blood, oxygen, heart rate, workout, battery 42%. And then I think, oh, let me just go backwards. Double tap, heart rate, blood oxygen, ECG. Let me go into minus one, so I clench. Okay, and then I'm in, I'm in mindfulness, which I don't really want to do at the moment. And I clench twice to go back to my main app screen. And I'm back to the app screen. So where you turn this on, is now remember that you're going to be watching, watching, gee whiz, you're going to be using <laughs> Watch OS 8. Okay, so you need to go into settings, accessibility, voiceover, and right down the bottom, it says hand gestures. And in there, you'll have the default for those hand gestures. So um, this is not on all the time. So even though you turn it on under voiceover on hand gestures, it's, you only turn it on manually. So you've got to wake the watch up with your wrist and then double clench and it's turned it on. And what I feel on my wrist is a vibration and I can hear a sort of brrr type sound and that tells me it's on. But as soon as my watch goes to sleep, I'm putting my hand over to my wrist down, it deactivates the hand gestures. I guess because if you're doing that or you're doing, you know, you're sparring or something, you don't want the thing to activate all the time. Um, so the, so the default settings are double clench, so clench, clench to turn it on. And it didn't activate then because my watch didn't wake up. That, that activates it. And then a single clench is to do a one finger double tap if using voiceover to activate an item. Double clench is if you're pressing the digital crown to come back out of an app to go back to your main screen. Single pinch is to move left. Double pinch is to move right. Um, and then, of course, I said, as soon as the watch goes to sleep, then it deactivates the hand gestures. But because VoiceOver allows you to change your gestures, you can customise those gestures to whatever you like. And again, um, there's also hand gestures in assistive touch. So if you've got people that find it hard to use the watch if they're using Zoom or they're not using VoiceOver because you can't do it with VoiceOver, um, or they're using a switch control or other mechanisms to activate the watch and use it, you can also customize those hand gestures for them also to use as well. So that's also pretty amazing stuff as well. Um, now, there's a few couple of workouts that have come to pass in the last month or so. And the two that I really like that really stand out. Yep, sorry, hand gestures again. You're going to, and again, you've be watching, you've watching, I did it again, didn't I? You've got to be using Watch OS 8. So you've got to go into uh, settings, accessibility, voiceover, and then right down the bottom, um, I think under large cursor, it'll say hand gestures. And then you double tap to go into that. Then it'll say hand gestures off. You double tap that button and it'll turn it on. Um, and then if you flick to the right, it'll tell you what the, the clench, the double clench, the pinch and the double pinch um, are used for. And like I said, to use it, you've got to wait the, the watch up by twisting your wrists, double clench, and it turns it on. Okay, it was quite funny. I was testing it out yesterday and, and my wife said, you are not using those hand gestures when you're in public because you've got to look like a, you got to look, a, look like a weird person, you know, clenching, double clenching, pinching. <laughs> Everybody's thinking you've got to, got to have some sort of twitch because you're actually clenching and pinching your fingers. Because I was wearing um, Aftershock's Bluetooth headset yesterday. So, you know, people couldn't even tell that, um, you know, my watch was off, so to speak, because I was using screen curtain, the screen was blank. I had headphones on, so the voice was going through the headset. Um, so as far as people could see, I was just moving my hands in, in weird and wonderful ways. Um, okay, so getting back to the workouts, you've got a really cool... Minutes left, David. Okay. Uh, sometimes I wish, Tony, I wish these could go for a couple of hours, because I always get carried away in this sort of stuff. Never mind. All right, so... With the workouts, you've got a really cool set of workouts called Walk With Me Workouts. And it's where sort of they've taken sort of, you know, fairly famous people around the world from different settings to talk about their life experience, a bit of their favorite photos from their life, their favorite music. And the trick is when you go for a walk or on the treadmill or whatever else you might like, 
you can join them on their walk. So you might be walking through a forest, along a cliff top, along a beach. So you get all the sounds of the birds, the person talking, their music. If you're using an Apple Watch with the workout, with your iPhone, you also get photos of the person popping up on your watch screen. So you can look at their lovely photos that they might be that might remind them of certain things during their life. So that's called the Walk With Me workout. And they've just introduced, and I've only said this in the last two or three weeks, but they're called audio meditation workouts. So the best way that I know how to get this working properly, because I tried to do it on the watch and I didn't like it, is you go into the fitness app on your iPhone, go to the library, and then look at all the workouts. And I think audio meditation is sort of right down the bottom. If you go into that and then start playing one, you can save that as a favorite, which will then bring it up on your Apple Watch. So um, now when I'm on my training circuit outside of my house here, um, I go into the audio meditation one. And there's a few ones there. They've got things like calm, strength. Um, I think one's called wellness and, and a few other ones. And, and they're really extremely well done. Of course, being audio, it's none of this, look at what I'm doing or look at over there. Um, it actually works quite nicely. I'm um, sorry, I didn't quite catch that one, Tony. What was it about what working? The question is, would you please deal with how to test that fall alert that is working? Which fall alert, though? For um, what, though? For the alarm or? Leanna, could you just um, type your question again? Yeah, because it might have scrolled off the screen or something. So while she's typing again, um, so yeah, so the workout one for the walk with me and the audio one are absolutely amazing. So they work both extremely nicely. Um, now here's a trick to do with the workouts. If you don't turn a workout on, the only thing that the Apple Watch will assume is that you're going for a brisk walk. Um, so that's the, the reason why when you go for an outdoor walk, you go for a hand cycle, you go for some stepping up, you go stretching, um, you go for an ecliptical ride, whatever else it might be that the Apple Watch has covered in over 30 different exercises. Make sure you turn that workout on because then Apple uses its, its accelerometer and all the other features will activate. Um, yeah, there's no way of testing it at all, unfortunately, Leanna, because <clears throat> if you test it, it'll actually ring triple zero. So the way it works is, um, this is a, a, a tip to do with the, particularly the fall detection. So if you have a fall, the Apple Watch will wait approximately five seconds before it will actually say, are you okay? And if you effectively say no, or don't do anything, it will then contact your, your emergency contacts and also ring triple zero, and it'll do a countdown. So it'll say five, four, three, two, one, and then it'll call triple zero. The other really cool thing it does, let's say if you say, uh, no, I'm okay, I've had a four, but I'm okay. What it will then do is in another five minutes, it will ask you again, because sometimes when you've had a four, and you like, we're all like, we say to people, oh, look, you know, you sort of wave them off and say, look, look, no, I'm fine, no problem. And then you go to get up and you're very dizzy or, or something else might have happened to you. That's why they've set the watch to come back in five minutes and say, are you sure you're okay? Do you still want to contact emergency services? And if you don't respond, it'll dial triple zero again. So that's just a little extra feature. But if you're under 65 years old, that fall protection will not be on by default. You've got to turn it on. Um, and I've had a friend of mine trying to test out the fall detection by falling herself as the very fit, healthy person, and she can't get it working. So somehow when you do a real fall, <laughs> that must be different from doing a practice fall because you can't get it working, but um, it does work. Um, Ellen, my wife, who's got neuropathy, she's had a fall and it's definitely activated when she's had a fall. But again, you can definitely stop it from calling. Um, and I've, I've only accidentally had, I think I fell once and it, it, I forgot to say, no, I'm fine cancel the, the dial and it did contact triple zero and I just said, look, I'm really sorry. I just had a four and I didn't get back to my watch in time to, or I forgot about my watch to, to call it. So, um, but no, it actually works really well. But unfortunately I just, but you're right, Leanna, I wish there was a, a testing mode where it had that the, the watch would only contact your emergency contact, not triple zero. 
um, because what it also does for triple zero, it also brings up your um, GPS location. And if you've filled in your medical ID, they apparently can also get access. I don't know how this quite works, but they can also get access to your medical ID. I don't quite know how that works, but apparently I've been told that it also happens as well. Because uh, the other thing that the watch does when you put all your information in the health app, um, that a, you know, a, a person coming up for an emergency can actually see all your health data about your weight um, or other information that you're putting about your blood, your heart, your sleeping, um, and all that sort of really cool stuff. Um, so yes, the fall protection does work, uh, but no, you can't unfortunately test it, which is one thing I've been whinging to Apple about because when I first got my watch with the S6, that's one of the things that when I upgraded from the S3, I wanted to test out for detection. And uh, yeah, you couldn't test it. If you hold in the digital crown for five seconds, that would do a manual emergency call too. So I won't do it now, um, but if you hold it in for five seconds, it will also think you're in an emergency. So if you're in a situation where you feel not secure or you feel frightened or whatever else you might be, you can hold that digital crown in. And again, it'll contact emergency services. So if you don't do anything, it'll, it'll dial triple zero for you. And of course, it'll put it on a loudspeaker because if you're sort of, you know, sprawled on the floor or you're standing up, not having your watch near your mouth, then it just puts it in loudspeaker mode because it actually thinks that's the way you want to communicate to the watch. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you about the watch is, of course, I've got a braille display here. This is the, um, actually, let me put the, my other watch on because this one's not set up to do that. So I'm going to take this one off. And while I'm doing that, a couple of the peripherals that I use with my watch all the time is, like I just said, my braille uh, display there, which is called the Orbit Reader 20, um, which has got a 20 cell braille display, but the Apple Watch will work with all modern braille displays via Bluetooth. And you don't set them up via Bluetooth on the watch. You have to go into VoiceOver, which is in uh, Settings, Accessibility, VoiceOver, choose Braille, and then it will set up the, the Braille display for you. And the other device that we also sell at Vision Australia, uh, which is called the Orbit Writer. And let me just show you this one. Okay, so here, that's the Braille display. So we've got the Braille keyboard, the space bar, and a, a, jo a joystick type cursor up the middle and the Braille display in the bottom. This is the same device. He says trying to hold it up the right way. The same device, but it doesn't have a Braille display on it. And this is called the Orbit Writer. Okay, and I can completely navigate my Apple Watch either using this keyboard or the Braille display device itself as well. So if you're not a Braille user and you don't want to spend, you know, a thousand dollars getting a basic Braille display, but you still want to be able to navigate via a device, then you can use the Orbit Rider, which Vision Australia actually sells both of these. And yes, Gary, you can buy the Apple Watch through the Vision Australia Vision Store. Um, and you can also buy the iPhone, you can buy the Aftershocks headphones, which is what I use with my Apple Watch all the time. And we also, like I just said, we also sell both for these as well. Um, so let me just see if my, my real Apple Watch, the one I don't test on, is going to behave itself. Turn that back on. Maybe it's had a little bit of a rest. That's still being silly. Hmm. Weird, isn't it? Never mind. Okay, demonstration error. So we'll just call that an MS for the day. But literally, when I've got my watch, my watch connected with this braille display, if I just press left, right arrow up on here, it can go left and right, like flicking left and right on the Apple screen keyboard. If I press the middle button, it selects it. But what I really like about the Apple keyboard, uh, using this keyboard, uh, sorry, the the braille input keyboard on this, or on my uh, orbit writer without the braille display is I can do all the normal things you can do using a braille display on the iPhone. So I can jump to the top of a list. I can jump to the bottom. I can do a find command. I can do the rotor. I can do everything I possibly can that you can do with voiceover mainly on the iPhone. So let me just pop back on my other watch, which actually is working. 
And I just want to show you the final thing about the rotor. And one more final thing I want to show you about the talk about some other cool feature. So I put this back on again. Yep, there it goes. Now, while I'm unlocking this, if you've got an iPhone, if your phone's locked and you unlock it, it will also unlock it will also unlock your Apple Watch. And if you've got a Mac, the Apple Watch can be also used to unlock your Mac as well, which is what I do. I've currently got I've got two Macs in here on the table, and I've got another one in my um, lab testing area, um, and they all unlock via the the Apple Watch which is really cool. So the final two things that I wanted to actually quickly tell you about. So the first of all is the rotor. So let me just go here. So we've got compass. So now if I do two finger rotate, we've got words, characters, headings, volume, speaking rate. So if I flick down, whoops. Headings, 70%, 60%, 60%. It's my watch going to sleep on me. Okay, so that was speed. Headings, volume, speaking rate, words, characters, actions, headings. So I, I can just rate, rotate around to the, the cow come home. And you can also set up different languages on the watch. So you can have English UK, you can have English uh, South African, you can have English India. English US, English Australia, of course, and of course the other, all the other Latin based languages, including Japanese, which is not Latin based, but you can have Greek, Italian, German, French, Spanish, Italian, all that sort of cool stuff as well. And the other function that I use all the time is that I use, there's a function under accessibility uh, or two functions I use all the time under accessibility. One is called um, the chime and you can either have the chime as a tone or as a bird chirping, and I've got a bird chirping on mine because I'm a silly person. Uh, and every, and you can set this for the every hour, quarter, half, or three quarter an hour, you can have the tone or the bird go off, so you can tr keep track of time. And of course, the other really cool function is when my phone is, my phone keeps saying that, when my watch is locked, if I do a one finger double tap, so it's just told me the time in vibration so it's given me the actual hour and what it does it does the hour in a long vibration is for 10 and quick vibrations are for one so i normally don't want to know the hour in the minute because i've got a pretty short good idea of the hour let's say i just wanted to get the minutes when my watch is actually turned off so to speak um, so rather than doing a one finger double tap at the lock screen i'm going to do one finger triple tap one two three So it's just done two long vibrations and seven quick vibrations, which means it's 27 minutes past one. And that's how you can tell that. So what I tend to do is I sort of discreetly have my hand underneath the table <laughs> and then I can one finger double tap, one finger triple tap my watch and nobody knows I'm checking the time because the worst thing I can do is go, let me just check the time. Go back to the screen. And you go, oh, and it's now 1328, which is pretty obvious you're checking the time. But if you just put the watch, put your hand over it, put your hand out of the way, nobody can see it. One finger triple tap, one, two, three. And it just vibrates the time out for you. Really, really cool. And that, by the way, that chime function and the taptic time is irrespective of whether you're using voiceover. It's just seen as the general accessibility option has nothing to do with voiceover. So that's actually pretty cool. So in the two minutes we've got left, does anybody have any final questions, comments or anything else? No, I'm looking at the chat. There, there was, was a couple question. of questions that came through about the water lock. So yep. someone had a question, um, do you need to adjust the water lock when you're in the shower? And no, you don't, no. And you, like I said, you, you, can, you can turn it on if you want, um, but I normally find after about half an hour, an hour, um, the speaker is normally fine in the watch. It's more when you go for an extended swim and the watch is submerged because you can have, you have this watch. I think they say it's rated up to 50 meters for immersion up to, I think it's complete immersion up to 30 minutes. But if you're just swimming and your arm's coming out of the water, then I normally find it takes several hours for the, the 
the membrane to dry properly. Um, otherwise, it'll dry after about six or so hours and the speakers will be back to normal again. Oh, so it's it's the same um, type of clearing for fresh water as it is for salt water? Yeah, no difference. Yep. And then someone had a question, is there a blood pressure monitor? No. 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 Okay. So that was, I probably said blood pressure by accident. So, oh, he's in the wallet. <gasps> How could I forget about the blood the the wallet one? So um, quickly, quickly, David, quickly. <laughs> no, I know, I know. So the Apple Watch, um, the, because the Apple Watch, in particular, besides the wallet that can have your vaccine stuff on it, uh, you've got Apple Pay. So I can simply hold up my watch to the FPOS terminal, and I press my digital crown. Uh, so my my dock on the side twice, that puts it in the Apple Pay mode, and I can simply pay. Um, over the over the <laughs> over the FBOS machine, so that works really well. So Apple Pay you can use in taxis, um, anywhere that's left, so the, anywhere that so does touch and go, you can use your Apple Watch. So I use mine at Audi all the time. That concludes um, the, the the session. Uh, we've run out of time, so I'll hand over to Christy now. Okay, well, thank you so much, David, for sharing all that awesome info. I think, um, yeah, I think you've sold me on the Apple Watch at least. <laughs> um, and thank you everyone for attending um, and hope you've learned a whole heap from David as well. Um, and please keep in mind if you've got any further questions um, on what, what's been discussed today, um, feel free to give us a call um, at the Vision Store team and we'd love to have a chat with any any questions or, or anything. Um, or you can call us on 1300 847466 or email us at visionstore at visionaustralia.org. Um, also, at the end of this webinar, there'll be a short survey for you co to complete um, and any feedback that you can provide will assist us in improving our content and delivery of future webinars. So that'd be super helpful if you could do that. And um, we would also love you to join us for our next Exploring Technology um, webinar with David next month. So the next topic is solutions from humanware. So check your email emails and our website for further details. So thanks again and goodbye. Thanks everyone. Thanks, David. Thank you. And you've sold me too, by the way. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Bye. Okay. See you later. Bye. Vision Australia. Blindness. Low vision. Opportunity. Vision Australia logo. Three navy blue ovals linked together diagonally within a bright yellow rectangle.